Hi folks, John Dunn here, RPG freelancer, publisher behind Melia Via. I'm up here today at Immortals with Mikey. What is up, John? We have an exciting announcement to make, I guess, right? Well, we've got a hot new drop to talk about today. Oh yeah, what is that? So we are going to chat today about Bandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk for Dungeons and Dragons. Heard a lot. Heard a lot about it, man. Have you? Kind of. Okay. So stores kind of, you know, I get customers come up, bring me food and things and whatnot, but besides that, they'll talk about the Shattered Obelisk, and I was like, what does that even mean? What what even is that? Well, we're so, going to talk about that. Cool. First, we're going to talk a little bit about how this book came to pass, though, right? Okay. So people have been playing 5th edition D&D for a while, may have actually already played through a big chunk of this. So this is an adventure. It's brand new. Really, it's a campaign. Uh, it covers the characters from 1st level all the way up through 12th for 5th edition Dungeons and & Dragons. And it's an expansion of... Uh, the Fandelver adventure that was in the starter set that came out back in 2014. And in that starter set, it was a 64 page booklet that kind of depended, that was kind of independent of everything else. So since it was the starter set, you didn't have to have a player's handbook or a monster manual or a dungeon master's guide. So it had pretty much everything you needed in those 64 pages. Well, this is a 220 page hardcover that covers all of the adventure that's presented in there, uh, but then it also adds on to it. So that first adventure took you from first to fifth level. This one takes you all the way up to 12th. So a little bit about this book. So Amanda Hammond was the project lead on this. Amanda has worked for Kobold and Paizo. She actually uh, did a lot of stuff on Starfinder, some books that we talked about previously. Nice. Uh, and then she moved over to Wizards of the Coast. The original starter set adventure was written by Rich Baker. I think I may have mentioned him once or twice before on other things. He Maybe. actually did some work for Melly or Via. A lot of notable names. Uh, for sure. He did not do any of the new material. I checked in with him on that and he said, no, they didn't come back to me. So all this new stuff was written by a new team of folk that Amanda got together. And then there is a ton of new art, some new maps and a few edits to the existing material, some layout tweaks kind of shift some stuff about. Uh, that original adventure is commonly regarded now as one of the best intro adventures for really any role-playing game out there. And uh, so this is more than a worthy successor to that. It's I quite think. a title. Yeah, it really is. So going through the book section by section, there are going to be spoilers here. So if you're planning on playing through this, maybe... Uh, duck out now stop yeah or not yeah uh the first part of the book is just the intro it's very similar to the original intro but it is expanded a bit it kind of takes advantage of the fact that the players are going to be creating their own characters instead of using the ones that were packaged with the starter set uh, and it talks about how you can tie in some of the different background options that are in the player's handbook into getting the characters going on the adventure uh, and it does address some of the new content, particularly stuff about the Far Realm. What's the Far Realm, you ask? Well, that is a, another plane of reality separate from the Forgotten Realms where other entities hang out and is particularly relevant to the latter part of this adventure. That includes the Illithids, the Mind Flayers. You know what a Mind Flayer is, Mikey? I've heard of it from, uh, you know. I think we've got a one... Kind of a trophy head of one hanging up on the wall in the store. Was that the thing presented in Stranger Things or no? Yeah, kind of very much. Do that they have name. that same form type of Well, they're vibe? kind of like Cthulhu. So the okay. the head is usually purplish and then they okay. got the tentacles coming of down course, from the mouth classic area. Classic tentacles. Yeah, exactly. Calamari. Love it. Yeah. Mind flares. They're the big bad in the upper parts of this adventure. So we'll come back to that though. So chapters one to four are basically the same as they were previously just some minor revisions some edits some new art a couple of scene maps <laughs> they did update the map font that they used to be consistent with newer stuff compared to the original version this is not a you know earth shattening revelation but uh yeah the fonts are different on the maps oh my gosh yeah, exactly they changed the font uh stat blocks are there's a few more that are added in here and really that part of the original booklet was about 50 pages, right? This chunk of this book now, that expands out to about 75. Now, some of that is because uh, just the layout is a little more spread out, and we added a few more things in, and there's a whole lot more art that they fit in there. Um, 
but some of that is stuff that they put in, particularly the intro, that alludes to the latter sections of the book. Worth noting, the appendix at the back of the book doesn't include creatures and magic items that are going to be in your Dungeon Master's Guide or in your monster manuals. So like Boots of Striding and Springing, those are in the Dungeon Master's Guide, so they're not included in the list of magic items here. The zombie and the green dragon that eventually are likely to show up again, are in the monster manual, so they're not included in this book. Chapter five is where we start to get into new content. This section of the book is called Paths and Perils. It takes your characters from fifth to seventh level. And we find out that after the characters have finished their first four adventure, first four chunks of the book, when they get back to Fandolin, which is kind of our town, that's our base of operations for the adventure, that there's a bunch of different crime scenes and there were some goblins behind it Eventually, the characters find out that there were stone shards that these goblins were stealing. And when they find the goblins, it turns out that the goblins, you know, like our buddy here that's standing here, the I mean, goblins. kind of shady. Yeah. I don't know why but these there. goblins have psychic powers. So they're psionic goblins. And the big bad has a big crystal sticking out of his head. It's kind of a cool piece of illustration. Great. Yeah. Uh, and that they have been sponsored by these other entities. And we find out, the characters can find out that when they go to defeat Ruk Ruxithid the Chosen, uh, after they get through a dungeon crawl to get to him, that there's some entities that have a kind of power that they're not accustomed to. It's not traditional magic. It's not divine magic. It actually turns out to be psionic powers. Whoa. And from here, it turns into a race to recover the other stone fragments. And these are the shards of the Shattered Obelisk that is mentioned in the title. So that's right. what the hype's about up front at the counter yes. here at Immortal Zinc. The next chapter is the Shattered Obelisk, and that takes the characters from 7th to ninth level. And after defeating Ruxithid, they find a map that points them to those three missing fragments. And they also find out that there are more townsfolk who are missing from Phandalin. So not only do they need to find the fragments, they probably want to rescue those missing townsfolk as well. And it's at this point that they find out that the Mind Flayers had invaded all of the places that these maps had gone to. Hundreds of years ago, they're long gone now. Couldn't possibly be a concern anymore, right? Right. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and so they undertake these three dungeon crawls. Hopefully they recover those artifacts. And in the process, they find a Mind Flayer, which is an awfully big threat to these characters that are in the 7th to 8th level range. And then we find out that the Mind Flayers are creating a ritual that's going to turn everyone on the surface, possibly just in the area around Phandalin, possibly in a much larger part of the Forgotten Realms, into Mind Flayers. Wow, so uh, pretty big issue right yeah, here. Big problem, something that requires big heroes like our player characters, right? A lot, yeah, a lot of conviction here, wow. Next chapter, chapter seven, is called Rifts in Reality. This takes your characters from ninth to 10th level. And at this point, they need to travel to the Far Realm. Uh, and it's going to start off with uh, Ilithinach, which is in the Underdark, and that is a Mind Flayer enclave. Uh, and they find, if they go back and visit Phandalin, that some of the residents of the town are actually already starting to transform into Mind Flayers. So... Things are not going well. Uh, at the very end of the adventure, the characters do tr have the opportunity to travel to the Far Realm through a gateway in a chamber, and that chamber is occupied by a giant, magical, psionic, monstrous brain creature. Of course. Yes, because brain creatures, the right? Does the brain creature have tentacles? You know it does. Of course. Right? goes without course. saying. Uh, our final chapter is chapter 8, Beyond a Lightless Star. This takes the characters from 10th to 12th level. More people in Phandalin are starting to transform, and the characters need to travel to the Far Realm, which, incidentally, is toxic to mortals. So they need to learn how to overcome that and deal with it. Uh, and then eventually they fight an avatar of a Mind Flayer god by the name of Ilvash, and the three Mind Flayer fanatics who are responsible for all of this. Uh, after that, we get into an appendix that covers all the monsters and magic items that are unique to the adventure. And then bound into the very back, we have a big old fold-out map like we've seen before. We love uh, maps. This is kind of an expansion of a map or a cleanup of a map that was in the original 
starter set, but that one was just eight and a half by 11. So, you know, this is a pretty nice one, kind of suitable for framing. Uh, be careful when you're taking it out. It is perforated along the edge, but uh, I needed to use a knife to get that out cleanly. The back of this has some maps from the interior of the adventures uh, to minimize any further spoilers. I'm not going to show those. I was kind of hoping that it was actually going to be a detailed map of Phandalin proper because the characters, you know, spend a lot of time hanging out there. But uh, this is a nice map and is real informative. Nice. So we do have the standard cover copy here, and we do also have some of the limited edition, kind of that foil, lustrous Alternate, copy. Yep, alternative copies. And uh, they are 60 bucks. Got them up here on the shelf or at immortalsinc.com. Well said, John. Thanks for coming in, and come check it out for yourself, guys. Till next time, folks. Good gaming.